we're going to initialize this thing as like 64, 32. Um, oh, wait, not size 64. Not coverage 32. H divide 64, V divide 32. So now it kind of give me some nice even squares here. We'll go ahead and make a poly mesh 3D. And then I'm going to make another sphere. And this one I'm going to drop way down because I'm going to use it as an insert mesh. So we're going to initialize this thing as a 8 and 8. And make a poly mesh 3D. I'm going to name this one just so I can see it easier. I'll call this Tiny Sphere. Go back to this one here, and I'm going to isolate. Uh, I, I was trying to do some fancy stuff with like the initialized primitive. You can mask by column and row. I can go ahead and show you guys that. So if you go into your Sphere 3D, I don't know if you guys know this, you can control click to mask, and then you can go over here to your, while it's in the initialized state, you can go to masking, and you can tell it, uh, mask by alpha, you can select like, skip, select every column, and uh, skip one, or you can do two by two, oops. Or you can do like four by four, and then if you just mask, you can do by um, column, it'll select four, skip four. Or you can do by row, it'll select four, skip four. And then if you want to, you can go through here with your, say, deformations, and you can do like a rotate across the Y. You can kind of do some cool stuff. Or you can do like inflate. So when you want to go and say make this a poly mesh 3D, you can then go through here and like group by normals and stuff and like pop pieces out of there. So um, that's one way. Um, what's my usual work for the posing characters? Uh, I don't like doing a lot of work, so I'll just do my A pose and then just get it all modeled up across symmetry. And then I'll just go through and use Transpose Master, master if I'm posing in ZBrush. Um, but ideally, I hand that off to the riggers and animators and say, have fun. Make him look cool in animation. That's the easiest thing to do. But yeah, transpose master, if I can, um, especially if it's a complex object like that. But it's usually very late in the game. After I'm already done, I'll pose them off. Uh, but anyways, since I couldn't do that with masking, I'm just going to go through here. And I'm just going to go through here and like click through really quickly. Now, you could also use the modeler to go through and do a poly group by poly loop on all these. But I'm just using the lasso feature where if you select an edge control shift click an edge it'll go ahead and get the rings for you we'll hit control w and now we can go through here we'll do insert nano mesh here on polygroup all i'm going to hit m not comma key m and we're going to grab our tiny sphere we're going to drag that out and we're going to go into our nano mesh properties here and do, 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 do. Where am I at? Nano mesh here. Uh, so on this thing here, I'm going to do uh, Z rotation. I don't want any rotation yet. So, but for our Z offset, I can pull this in and out. Let's go ahead and pull that in to zero. And then for our height, we'll kind of shrink it in like this. And now I'm going to go in through here and we're going to insert nano mesh again. And I'm just going to insert the same shape. But what I'm going to basically do is go back to index zero. I'm going to copy those properties. I'm going to go to index one and I'm going to paste it so they all match up. Now fly eyes are kind of offset a little bit here. So what I'm going to do is go into our X offset. No, our Y offset. I'm just going to scoot it over like a half, half measure there. And so now I can get kind of a fly eye look. Now, of course, you can go through here, go back to your index one, and you can go through, and instead of, you can do the scale up a little bit to kind of push them together. Uh, you can also fit it to there and then scale it up to one, and that'll kind of fit it a little bit better maybe. Um, and then, of course, you can copy that to the index one, or you can just do it over here. So we can go to like fit and then just crank up the size a little bit maybe. And that'll get you kind of fly eyes. So now if you like this, uh, and while it's still instance, you can just go in here with your move brush here and just move this thing around. You know, it's just instance geometry just sitting on top. So it's just following those polygroups. If you make the polygroups new or make the shape underlying different, it'll just follow that around because it's just nano mesh, just instance um, geometry, like I said. Uh, if you want to make it real geometry, we're going to go one to mesh, one to mesh, and then control shift click. 
control shift click and then we'll just do a split hidden and I'm going to do D to go into dynamic subdiv. And then we've got our sphere here. And now we've got a uh, fly eyeball of sorts. So you can kind of use that maybe for your insect eyes. Anyway, thanks everybody for showing up. Um, it's getting close to closing time. So I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. Oops, sorry, my face is way up there now again. Um, I will catch you all next week. We'll get into more cool stuff. We'll get some more robots in. We'll maybe go back to the, we'll go to the sci-fi character. Maybe I'm doing a pixel art channel or some other stuff. But uh, anyway, y'all have a good night and I'll see you next time.